This video will show you how to replace the brake springs and brake disc assembly on all models of strong-arm electric winches made by the Dutton Lanson Company, except for the TW4000 and 4015. To access these parts on your winch, you must first disconnect it from power and then remove its cover. That process varies depending on the model and features of your winch. So follow along when your winch is described in the top left corner of the screen. If you have a DC winch with a remote, there is a pigtail coming out of the back of the winch. Use a standard pair of pliers to pull the strain relief bushing out of its hole in the cover so it hangs loose on the remote cord. If you have a SA series DC winch without a remote, remove the switch and its attached wiring harness from the side of the winch. If your winch has a clutch, Grab a number one Phillips screwdriver, loosen the clutch handle's two screws, then lift the handle and screws off of the winch. On TW9000s, use a small flathead screwdriver to loosen the small screw in the switch knob. Then pull the knob off with the screw and small washer inside of it. Grab a 5 8 inch wrench and remove the switch's nut. Then use a flathead screwdriver to remove the flat washer underneath the nut. Next, use a 3 8 inch wrench to loosen and remove the bolts on all four corners of the winch's cover. Pull the front of the cover open and lift it off of the winch. On AC winches, carefully remove the three motor wires from the frame clip on the side of the winch. On a TW9000, you might have to gently tap on the end of the switch panel to get it out of its hole in the cover. But don't hit it too hard or you may damage it. If the internal tooth lock washer fell off the switch panel, put it back on, then spin the switch nut onto the end of the panel to keep the washer in place. On all models, simply leave all of the wires connected to the cover and set it aside while you replace the brake springs and brake disc. The location of the brake springs varies depending on the model of winch you have, but the process to remove them is the same. So to do it, Use a 5 16 inch wrench to loosen the two screws holding the brake springs to the winch base. Then pull off the bolts, spacers, and springs. Start removing the brake disc by using a small flathead screwdriver to pry the E-ring off of the pinion gear, followed by lifting the pinion gear off of the brake disc. Next, slip a 3 8 inch wrench between the brake disc and winch base to loosen both of the motor nuts, then you can use your fingers to spin them off of the motor. Pull the motor away from the brake disc until you can slide the disc off the end of the motor. To install your new brake disc, we recommend laying your winch on its side before you slip the ends of the motor through its holes in the base and your new brake disc. Lift up the disc as high as you can while keeping the bolt ends of the motor lined up with its holes in the base. Even then, there won't be much room for your fingers to get the nut started, so this part can be pretty tricky. Once you do get the nut started on the bolts, use your 3 8 inch wrench to fully tighten them. Push the brake disc back down, slip the pinion gear back on top of the brake disc, then use your flathead screwdriver to push the small E-ring back in place. It's now time to assemble and install new brake springs. Hold one spring so its pad is facing down, then insert a bolt through each of the holes in the spring. Flip everything over, then slide the shorter spacers on the ends of the bolts if you have a SA5000 or 7000, or the longer spacers on the ends of the bolts if you have a SA9000, 12000, or TW9000. Slip on the other spring so its pad is pressed against the other brake spring pad, then place your remaining spacers on the ends of the bolts. Your assembled brake spring parts should now look like this. Line up the ends of the bolts with their holes in the winch base, and position the spring so a pad is on both sides of your new brake disc. Tighten the bolts with your 5 16 inch wrench, making sure that the brake spring pads are not touching the fins of the brake disc. This area is harder to see on SA5000s and 7000s, and you also need to be sure on those models that the brake spring pads aren't touching the nearby gear. Reinstalling your winch's cover is the final step to complete your repair. 
on TW 9015s, bunch up the wires near the back of the winch so that they are out of your way. Stretch out the front of the cover and place it over the base. If you have an AC model, slip the three motor wires back into the frame clip on the gear side of the winch. It is crucial to understand that your winch could experience a serious electrical malfunction if any of these three wires are hit by the winch's gears that spin when it is being used. So make certain that the wires are tucked into the corner of the cover, as far away from the gears as you can get them, as you reinstall the cover on an AC winch. On TW9000s, partly reinstall the cover, then remove the switch nut from the end of the switch panel. Find the flat side of the switch panel and the flat side of its hole in the cover. Then put the end of the switch panel into the hole so the flat sides line up. You'll probably have to use a pair of pliers to pull the end of the panel fully into place and then you can finish reinstalling the cover. Place the switch's flat washer over the end of the panel, then tighten the switch nut with a 5 8 inch wrench. Set the switch knob on top of the washer, making sure it is facing up. Put the small washer back inside the knob, and then the small screw, which you can then tighten with a flathead screwdriver. If you have a DC winch with remote, make sure the red connector is in its slot in the cover. Gently pull on the remote pigtail so little cord remains inside the cover. Then pinch the strain relief bushing back into its hole in the cover. Next, get the two longer cover screws and use your 3 8 inch wrench to screw them into the corners of the gear side of the winch. Then grab the two shorter cover screws and tighten them into the opposite side's corners. For SA Series DC winches without a remote, firmly press your switch and harness back into the slot on the side of the winch. If your winch has a clutch, Find the largest hole on the clutch lever and the largest hole on the clutch spring keeper. Line them up as you press the lever back onto the keeper. Then tighten both of the lever screws with your flathead screwdriver. Your winch should now be ready to be used. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss any future DL videos and visit our YouTube channel for a wide catalog of repair videos like this one.